Hey folks, here OS Reviews. You're watching our video first look at the MAS Smart TV Android Box. This is a great Android TV box for you to use if you want to watch some Netflix, streaming videos on YouTube, or anything that you don't already have a smart TV in your house. It's fairly inexpensive coming in at under $100, but also fares with middle-of-the-road graphics and performance. But best of all, it also features some unique functionalities, such as a built-in webcam, which we haven't really seen on an Android TV box before, which makes video chatting possible on a larger display like on your television. And also, it has a metallic construction, which is pretty rugged and also very durable. Taking a look at the packaging, it's pretty nice and uh, has pretty good presentation. The version we have here has a quad-core CPU and an octa-core GPU, and it's a Cortex-A9 chipset, 2GB of RAM, which is sufficient for most games, graphics, and also for video streaming, and also has 16GB of ROM, so pretty good specifications um, according to that. We have XBMC support for video, it runs on Android Jelly Bean, there's again that camera and microphone, and also for Skype and chatting. So an interesting skin is going to be on top of Android that we have here for an ease of use, and we'll certainly see that later on in our review. Taking a look at the side here, we have Smart Multimedia Player, Maker TV into an Android PC. On the back, some more information about the unit itself. So let's take a look at what's inside the packaging. You can actually find this directly from the company's website or from Amazon.com. And our review unit arrived after five days after we ordered it, so pretty fast shipping. We'll set this off to the side and take a look at that in a moment. Inside the packaging itself, we also have access to the standard AC mains adapter, which has a bit of a limited cord length, which means the setup might be a bit limited, but uh, it's a proprietary charger with a proprietary tip on the other side. We do have access to a remote control, which uses uh, kind of gestures for you to use it. It's actually an infrared sensor remote. Uh, this doesn't use Bluetooth or anything like that. You have a T9 cell D-pad down below here. Numbers are pretty much risen above the surface, so they're easy to press. Standard volume controls and also standard Android controls are located on the top. Cursor controls, 5-way navigation toggle, pretty tactile, power on and off switch, and also a mute key. Pretty easy to press, pretty comfortable in general, and also you have the AAA battery compartment on the back. It takes two of those to operate, and you simply kind of wave it around in order for the mouse to actually function. Inside, you also have access to a full HDMI cable, 1.5 meters of length, and also gold plated, which means you have an ultra tight connection. It's a nice freebie that's thrown in there. There's also a AV cable in case you don't want to use HDMI or you want to use a monitor that doesn't support HDMI. This is a good option to go with. And function, and lastly, you have access to a USB port, which allows you to extend one of the USB ports for connecting to uh, other peripherals. And uh, mouses and keyboards and anything like that, thumb drives, hard drives. There's also a user manual printed in full color, which is pretty impressive. It's well documented and shows the various stages of setup and how to access all the functions on the device. Setting that off to the side and taking a look at the MAS itself, we have an antenna, which is pretty stiff and easy to rotate. But best of all, again, the construction quality is crafted out of metal, and the size of the T box remains relatively small. The metal construction means you have a really high end and premium look to the actual Android box, despite its inexpensive price tag, and also the fact that it also uh, allows you to eliminate heat much easier and much faster. The front features the aforementioned 1.3 megapixel webcam and also an IR uh, port and also the aforementioned microphone as well. The placement of the webcam is slightly strange considering the Android box will likely, likely be sitting on a desk uh, by the television so the angle is going to be a bit odd and difficult to I think get to uh, your face but we'll have to see how that pans out. The left hand side features the two USB ports for you to connect to accessories, hard drives, thumb drives. Right hand side, two more USBs for a total of four, and also a micro SD card slot to expand the memory even more. The back features the DC input for the power, a LAN Ethernet port if you don't want to use Wi Fi. There's also Bluetooth built in, I believe. Uh, we'll have to check on that. The AV out cable if you don't want to use the HDMI here. An optical, optical cable for you to extend to stereo. Um, sound system for better performance, and on the back, back of the unit we have access to four rubber feet which prevents the device from sliding around when sitting on a desk or surface. Overall the hardware device is again quietly attractive, there's a nice chrome ring around the side which makes it look pretty shiny, and I would say that the hardware itself is top notch and one of my favorite Android TV boxes I've seen so far just because of that metal build and that relatively slim. Look at the actual operating 
system experience, we have a rather clean install of Android. It's quite vanilla and that's something we do appreciate, which means we don't have too much bloatware going on. As you can see here, we have on the native home screen, we have a live wallpaper. There's also four icons down below corresponding to the browser, setting, camera, and explorer, which is the file manager. So it's very clean, very simple to use. And on the very top, there's a quick Google search icon that you can press to type on. It's automatically going to go and search the web. Uh, tapping on the all programs list, we get a better experience here of um, idea of what programs are pre-installed. So in addition, there's going to be that camera for the webcam um, itself. There's something called eHome Media Center, which is basically going to provide a more streamlined experience if you don't like the complexity of Android, you don't want that much customization. This is a good way to go just to simplify things, uh, just to make it easier to use with the actual remote, which offers, again, simple controls left, right, up, and down. So you can see how in this particular scan or program, we have access to just the media player, just the settings, and just the media server. So it's simplified, you have a time, you have a clock, and it's quite easy to see. And going back, we can see we also have access to an MX player, which is a Codex player that allows you to play back 1080p HD videos without too much issues, and it also supports a host of different file formats in general. You also have access to the full Google Play Store for downloading more games, applications, and programs. There's also access to Quick Office, which allows you to edit and create Excel, PowerPoint, and Word documents, which is pretty useful if you're using it for productivity, although you will need to plug in a third-party external keyboard or something like that just because it's a little bit difficult to navigate with just the mouse itself. Again, using the actual uh, device, you can also see we have access to a regular standard mouse, so that's what you want to do. And again, you can see the mouse kind of bring up on screen. It's, it's pretty sensitive. Uh, I can click on again to exit out of the mouse mode. So taking a look at some other features that we have over here, now in the mouse mode, we also have access to a arcade game control settings, so you can actually use it to play a few arcade games. Uh, there is a Wi-Fi display that connects your phone using your Android phone using Wi-Fi to the Android box, so you can actually push whatever is being displayed on your phone onto the television, so it's pretty cool. There's built-in Skype because, again, we have that really unique built-in front-facing camera that we really haven't seen before on other Android boxes. Resolution of the camera isn't that great, especially in low light performance. It's a little bit dark, it's a little bit difficult to see. Uh, also, we have X. Uh we also have XBMC, which again allows you to play back some more uh, Kodaks. It's a media center, which again provides a bit of a skin on top of Android, just to make the experience of you know using a TV box a bit easier. So we're going to see this launch up here. Again, a very simple to use UI. We have access to music, uh, to programs. You have access to, um, again, access to programs. I'm going to try to actually get out of the mouse mode here. Uh, and then you have system, videos, files, uh, and also your time on the very top. So it's kind of similar to what we saw before, but it's another version that you can use if you don't want to use the complexity of Android. This is a good option to go with. Overall, the responsiveness of the device is actually pretty speedy. We didn't really experience any lag unless you were opening up five or six programs at the same time. As far as general game back performance goes, it's actually pretty strong as well. We didn't really experience any issues uh, in that department. And so it's going to be pretty easy to use, um, again, as a general device just for playing back videos. It does a good job of streaming video content. Taking a look at the device, we can also check out the Android version. It is indeed 4.4.2. We can tap on that a few times. Again, it's going to be KitKat, and we do have the full KitKat experience. So taking a look at the web browsing experience, uh, again, it's going to be okay, but with the remote, it's a bit limited. Speeds are acceptable. They are pretty fast and responsive just because the Wi-Fi on here has a pretty tight connection. And so there's not too much of an issue in terms of loading back rather complex pages and uh, doing searches online. Again, you can also watch YouTube directly from the built-in browser, which does a pretty good job. You can stream video content just like you would stream it on any application that you can install. Not too many video applications, uh, video streaming applications are included right out of the box, which I found to be pretty interesting and a little bit um, something that we I didn't really expect. I expected to see a lot of it from native built-in uh, streaming video services like Netflix or um, also like CNN or maybe BBC pre-installed, but those are things you have to actually separately install. But they're free, they're pretty fast, and you simply search up the application in the Google Play Store and then you can, you can basically load that application up. Um, again, we can also watch YouTube videos. See here we have OS reviews or our own page loaded. Um, again, you're going to have the mobile site load over the classic site at first, but you can always overturn that by selecting 
the uh, actual full advanced site if you want to do that through these settings. It's actually pretty easy to use. Um, you can see this is basically how the YouTube client works over the direct web browser. Uh, so this is just like loading up YouTube.com and seeing how that works out. It actually works pretty well. You can see how videos load almost instantaneously. I can tap on videos to pause them again. Um, I can also go to full screen. So the experience so far is actually pretty responsive and lucid. Uh, it's also kind of, again, pretty pretty impressive in general. It's easy to scrub through the videos and get to the places you want. So again, video experience, which is the main priority for this Android box, is very strong. Gaming performance, on the other hand, is a bit weaker just because, again, you have a bit more lag, but at the same time, it definitely handles any games you really want to throw at it with uh, a pretty good amount of ease, as long as you're not doing too many programs in the background, it still should work fine. Most popular titles will work without too many issues. In conclusion, we'd say that the MAS Smart TV Box, or Android TV Box, is actually a pretty compelling buy, just because it has a quad-core CPU and octa-core GPU, which makes gaming performance as well as streaming video much better than traditional boxes we've seen in the past. It's also fairly inexpensive, and we really like how the device is crafted out of metal and also features a webcam, which are features that I think differentiates itself from other models currently on the market. Uh, it might not be the fastest uh, Android TV box out there just because it doesn't have an octa-core chipset, but for most general usage, it should be just fine. There's not a lot of bloatware installed, so you can really customize it to your liking. Um, I think this is a great Android TV box to get for friends or family, or perhaps you want to uh, uh, purchase one to connect and transform your current television into more of a smart TV. You can check out more information about this product in our official written review. This has been our video review here at OS Reviews. Thanks for watching. We rate this product 4.5 stars out of 5.